Hey guys, and welcome back to a brand new video. Today, we're diving into Premiere Pro, and I'm gonna be running you through my top 11 tips, tricks, hacks, and tools that I use on a day-to-day -day basis to speed up my workflow like no tomorrow. And I promise you this, I guarantee there's one, at least one thing that you didn't know within this list. So without further ado, let's dive into Premiere Pro and let's get this started. All right, so the first thing I use all the time is the ability to swap clips without having to do this. And let's be honest, we've all done this. To swap clips, let's say I wanted to move this clip where this clip is right here. We'd have to move it like this, move this one up first, then move it over, then down, or something similar. Maybe move all of them out to over here, then come in here, push like this, and it's time consuming, especially when you're doing this hundreds of times a day. So what you can do instead is hit Option and Command and hold those down and then drag and drop the clip to the end of the clip, boom, let go, and you just swap the clip position. This is an absolute key. All right, moving on. This is more focused at audio. Well, actually, it's completely focused at audio. Let's say we were working on a project and we had a whole load of different voiceovers, but we wanted to match the audio level. And instead of doing that, going in here and moving like this, like, ah, I think this one is about that kind of level. And I'm not sure where that was. 0.8. Okay. To bring this one down, point, point 0.8. It's a, little bit fig it's, a, it's a little bit annoying to do. So what you need to do is come over to this button here. Now, if you can't see it like on audio two or audio three here, all you need to do is drag this a little bit further down, then you're gonna see this button. So once you do that, we're gonna go over to clip keyframes, then up to volume, and there we go, just like that. We're now controlling the volume for everything on audio one, just like it was one thing. And this is without nesting or without render and replacing, which saves a lot of time. And just as a little side note, because this does unfortunately make things a little hard to work with. You can't drag and drop any clips. If you wanna stop this, all you have to do is press clip keyframes and you're good to go. But everything doesn't reset to the levels you just set it to for some weird reason. So usually this is best done at the end of your edit. All right, next up, let's say you're working through a podcast, a big talking head video or whatever the case, and you wanna be able to speed up your playback. This is something I do all the time because sitting through and watching it in real time can just be a little bit too time consuming. So all you need to do is get the playhead moving. So you can either press space or press L and then press L again. That's gonna speed it up and L again, L again, L again, L again, and things get out of hand real quick. To stop that, you just need to press space bar. And then if I hit space again, everything's back to normal. And a little bonus tip for you, if you wanted to move backwards, you press J and then you press J again, it'll speed it up, so on and so forth. Woo, that's getting out of hand. But either way, speeding up your time frame, speeding up your timeline, sorry, not even speeding up your timeline, speeding up your playhead is a very crucial element to getting things done quickly. Next up, we've got using in and out points really effectively. So we all know in and out points are very, very handy and we can set them by pressing I and then O to set in and out. And let's say I wanted to make a little edit right here on my timeline for whatever reason. And let's say I wanted to get clips all the way from back here. And I was like, okay, I want this clip to go into my edit. I'd hit command C to copy it. And then instead of scrolling all the way back, let's say you're working on a really big timeline or if you're just getting lost and haven't set your in and out point, what you can do is either just press enter and that is gonna send you right to the start of it or you can hit shift I and that's gonna send you to the start of it. And then boom, you're right where you were. You can hit command V, paste your clip and you are good to go. Next up is all to do about resizing music. No one likes it when a song just randomly stops. It's kind of annoying. So instead of doing that, what you can do is you can come over to this tool right here, the ripple tool, and then you can click and hold down and then you can drag over to the remix tool, let go. And now what this is gonna do is you can resize music as you see fit. So let's say we wanted this to only be this short, or let's say actually we wanted it to be this long, boom. We're gonna drag and drop it out to where we needed it to be, and then we just let Adobe do its thing. Now, sometimes this works really well, sometimes it doesn't work very well, but let's have a look and we can clearly see where they've made their little cuts here. So as you can see, we've got one, two, three, four, and more or less it's just gonna be the song repeating, but it's gonna analyze it and get a really good, I guess, grasp on where the music should repeat, and it's not you just randomly cutting and going from there. So let's listen and see if this sounds any good. Sounds pretty good to me, right? Let's watch, let's listen to one more. Boom, I'm happy with that. I would definitely use that in a video if need be. And of course, you can also do it the shorter way. Now there are limits to how short you can make things or how long you can make things, but this is a very, very handy tool to use. All right, let's get some short, fast ones in there. Let's unlink some clips. So for example, let's say we just wanted the video on this and for some reason, the audio just keeps moving around with it. All you need to do is make sure the clip is selected, hit Command L, 
boom, you're unlinked, and there you go. Now the video, now the audio isn't coming with it, or if you just wanted the audio, now the video isn't coming with it, you get rid of it, and you're good to go. Splitting clips as well is something I do all the time, and instead of getting this horrid razor tool, zooming in and then finding exactly where you wanna cut, this is far from ideal. Instead, what I do is I just move my playhead and press K, I wanna cut there, K, I wanna cut there, boom, delete this, boom, delete that. This is a much faster way of cutting. Now, something that's gonna be really handy for everyone out there that's not using a super expensive computer is playback resolution. Let's say you just got dumped some big R5C footage and you need to go through it. Well, you can either create proxies, which takes a load of time, or instead what you can do is you can come into this little drop down menu here and you can reduce the playback resolution that the footage is played back at. So let's say for example, we wanted to do full. Well, this is gonna be playing back 4K 60 FPS footage. Okay, looks great. But if your computer is struggling with it and can't play it back, let's do it down to one eighth. And as you can see, now the playback quality is dropped to a one eighth of the playback quality well, of the quality of the clip. And there we go. Hopefully your computer can now manage this. And this is an easy way to just speed up your workflow that little bit more. Speeding up and slowing down your footage can also be a little bit of a pain, guessing how long or short you need your clip to be, or if you don't have it mapped to a keyboard shortcut, having to right click and go into speed duration can also be a bit of a pain. So what you can do is come into the rate stretch tool, which is right here, or you can just press R on your keyboard. And there we go. Now we can, ooh, now we can drag, there we go. Now we can drag and drop this clip as short or as fast as we want it to be. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna slow it down. So this was shot in 50 frames per second. So I can roughly get it to about double the size that it already was and I'll be good to have a nice smooth playback. But if I wanted to make this shorter and speed it up, well, just like that, now it's gonna be really quick and go through like that. It's not cutting or resizing your clip whatsoever. It's speeding it up or slowing it down. Duplicating clips, adjustment layers, color grades, whatever it may be is something I also do all the time. So instead of pressing Command C or God forbid, right clicking and hit copy and then go in and hit Command V to paste, what you can do is hold down Option, click and drag your clip and then let go, but make sure you don't let go of option before you let go of your mouse and let the clip drop, because what is gonna happen there is if I just let go of option now, I'm just gonna move the clip instead. So if you're having a little trouble with that, chances are you're letting option go way too early. And last but not least is reframing your horizontal sequences just like this into vertical sequences. Let's be honest, everything's moving to TikToks, YouTube shorts and reels. So this is a nice little quick hack. What you can do is come into the assembly tab here, find your sequence in your project, right click auto reframe sequence and then you get to choose you can either go square vertical 4x5 which is like the Instagram post or 9x16 which let's be honest that is what everyone's going to be using hit create and just like that everything is now moved into vertical all you need to do is make sure that your footage is aligned it's scaled to the right aspect and just like that they are my top 11 Premiere Pro hacks and tips and tools and tricks that I use on a day-to-day -day basis. I hope you learned something new in this video and you're able to speed up your Premiere Pro workflow. And if you were, let me know what